do you know what's so funny is when someone hands you a cup of tea this is true. You know when you ask for a cup of tea and then they're really polite about it. Yeah. They hand you a cup of tea holding it because oh. they don't want you to get burnt and they don't tell you how oh, much their yes. hands are burning. Oh, no, sweet. it's true. But I have asbestos hands. I've sliced through so many nerve endings. Oh, God. I have. Asbestos. I, my, I, I get it from my mum. She just forever would never see the end of the onion and the beginning of the finger. So you get what? Clum- like, what? <laughs> I like can't say I'm, I'm, I can t- I'm tapping. Okay, the, just for the benefit of the thing. tape, um, the way he, the way Tom proved he couldn't feel a thing was by touching me. I don't know what, I don't know how that proved anything. Um, no. So no. You, you have no feeling. Are no, we, are we, not are we really. rolling? So I'm, yeah, we're rolling. Oh, right. So I'm brilliant for things on on ludicrously hot plates. Well, I am. Ludicrous. I'm famously. Um, I'm famously bad with all forms of sensitivity. I'm so, I get in pain. So that's why I said, I don't know if you heard, when I asked for the tea, I said, could it be freezing cold? <laughs> Anything <laughs> above room temperature, I'm just like, I can't have anything to do with this. So this is so hot, I will not be able to drink it for I a while. I have a theory about this. I can't wait. I always think it's to do with the way parents respond when you're very, very tiny. I love it. Well, when they you throw know, you into a bath you and you just have to get your boy and you just cry, it'll be all right. It's fine. That crucial age, you know when children fall flat on their face and you get half the parents go, oh my darling, how are you? And the other ones go, you're all right, up you get. Wait a second, are you trying to suggest that you were toughened up as a kid and I, and I was some sort of Molly Coddle I, d- I didn't think this through this because I suppose you. inadvertently I, I was suggesting that, yes. Well, I, I, I was a very dangerous young man. I was so were dangerous. You? Oh yeah, I'm covered in scars. So is that a scar? Scar. Why were you so Shut I, we, up, we, you were not dangerous. I was a danger. Oh, look, I've got both. Look at that. You see that? You see that oh, hole there? Well, that's where you stabbed yourself with a spoon that, or something. That is from a potato. <laughs> oh I, I dropped a potato on my body uh, on my birthday once and it burnt a hole on me and um <laughs> I, I was what? genuinely so i think i was just i'm just petrified of heat all, all forms of heat oh, and my. yeah so um i was even taking i was hospitalized so much as a child the hospital were like mr and mrs hess those are my parents names by the way were like um this doesn't add up so i had to have all these tests to check oh, that you weren't I, beaten by your parents no, no, I d- just check my parents were like oh, trust me he's an idiot he's falling over all the time <laughs> so these doctors did all these like, idiot te- idiot tests on me really? and they were like well we, we, there's something wrong with them we don't, there's not a word for it but i mean i mean it speaks for itself yes yeah, so i've covered all these scars but, so maybe that is it maybe i was i was hurt so much with hot potatoes and stuff, I thought. I, I'm yeah, scared but of it's heat. indelibly seared on your brain, you poor thing. Yeah, it's. Right. But I we're think not, you were beaten by your parents. That's really it. Don't hope cover I, it up, man. You're, no, you're one day going to have one of those things where you <laughs> suppressed it for so long, and suddenly <laughs> no. the Pandora's box going to open in this podcast. What you're going to go, of, oh my God. What sort of horrible <laughs> exclusive are you after? <laughs> Mom, mother and father. <laughs> Um, bless them I can't wait to see them one day um, really <laughs> when they get out <laughs> you know, um, they treated me delightfully hello everyone welcome to Private Parts Podcast this is where we read the most intimate and sort of details of our lives join me on this episode is Tom Reed Wilson and Adam Hess hello everyone hello, hello everyone lovely to see you again hi guys Tony. basically so Adam you haven't been on this podcast before no not yet just to let you know we have like a load of listeners oh my god yeah listeners. like we have listeners who <laughs> oh just my listen goodness, god. I mean like thousands when I say oh. 27,000 27, yeah and so, 28 so to put into some sort of context what should I be imagining well weirdly enough we had your roommate on uh, the podcast oh yeah I heard who is a bit of a dick man. he's a bit slimy isn't he's he he's just a bit weird he's a bit of, he's, he snazzes me all the time he's a bit sneaky he snazzes you yeah he snazzes me what's that I'm trying to get that word out there we'll, it, we'll work it out is he's it what throwing shade he does tricks on me I thought I'd do tricks on him and like he's a sneaky guy did you get that he's got a sneak do you know what face. he's one of the he, yeah, oh he's, I see covert a, and shade yeah we, we try we, we sneak each other but he's uh, he's, he's quite a, wait what does sneaking each other mean like a like that like, what like is that? getting each other like swapping stuff around. like like an impulsive prankster yeah, but not like a prank. It's something you could like then go, ha ha, this was funny. So imagine saying boo to someone. Yes. So but, you, that, but in a way that you wouldn't want to regale in a joyous way. Oh, so you like you like hide each other's scale electrics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, once I am, um, once I mean I once. Oh, uh, not had, again, Reese. I once had a um, a nutri. I was trying to be healthy, so I made some sort of slime in a nutri bullet. Start drinking it. I left it or something. Came back. Was drinking it. There was metal in it, and I think he put a dairy triangle in it. So no. all the foil 
Oh, it was, yeah. Nice. I don't know if you, it wasn't trying to kill me. I hope it wasn't trying to kill me. It was No, done. but it could slice your vocal cords. It could that's absolutely your, slice your stuff. I sounded trade. like you about a, a week ago, and then I, and <laughs> well, I sound like this. This is, this is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. So, so Adam is talking about his uh, housemate, Reese uh, James, who was, by the way, Reese James. Tom is one of the funniest people I've ever very funny guy dude he's, he's so quick he's so funny he's so charming he did this prank call to the O2 which is just yes. genius uh, so listeners if you listen to that thank you so much um, but he is he's just a really great guy but I heard that <laughs> and he told me the thing that you guys do together that you thought you had mastered <laughs> oh when I thought I tricked and beat in a casino system yeah so yeah. Oh, it ended terribly it ended terribly Adam thought he had tricked a casino into giving him money pretty much he thought well I've got it I've got well why don't you explain it again very quickly to talk very oh very my. briefly uh i thought if you go to a casino put 10 pounds on red and then if it loses you think oh, i'll just put 20 quid on red and then if that loses you think oh, i'll put 40 quid on red double it every time <laughs> i thought but in the fifth time that will come up and then you only down a couple of hundred quid <laughs> no senor <laughs> oh, no, I, no I, ended up, yeah, I ended up ruined like ruined <laughs> And this was this was after a breakup where I didn't really see the link between oh I can just change my life I'll get a new coat and get some sort of casino addiction and then <laughs> no for that I lo- I ended up lo- getting like like eight blacks in a row and blowing everything and um, then uh, I got a new addiction which was Bitcoin because I read an article that was a bit old <laughs> where I was convinced it was about to shoot up and I've lost everything did, did oh, we mention that. Did Reese mention that? He hasn't mentioned, but I've oh, got yeah. my notes right oh, here. Oh, shit, yeah. I'm saying talk about crypto because he's depressed at the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was swaggering around. We, we thought we were like, we generally watch Wolf of Wall Street like in preparation for this like yeah. Bitcoin oh, thing. We're going to become billionaires. You bought loads of cocaine. You were ready to go. I bought, I bought a new jacket. <laughs> I bought a new jacket that, did, that was too loud for my personality. People kept saying, well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that's very bold. So I thought, I can wear what I want. I'm going to be a Bitcoin millionaire. And then it just plummeted. And it was the worst Christmas day. <laughs> I've only ever once been tempted to be a gambler. Yeah. And it was in Mykonos. And I made friends with this. Well, she could have been anywhere between 75 and 175. <laughs> She'd had numerous facelifts. And okay. she, she greeted me at breakfast every morning. Mm-hmm. And she was a darling. And her name was Angela. She got off a cruise ship. And she said, darling, I, I just decided I was going to do my own Shirley Valentine, which she informed me was shot in Mykonos. Mm-hmm. And she said that when she was in London, she would go to the Hippodrome. She'd blow all the money she had. And if she did extremely well, she'd go back in a Bentley. And if not, she'd oh go my. back on the 17 bus. <laughs> back and to I Mykonos. That is the back life. to Mykonos. Oh, right. <laughs> back to Notting Hill, I think. Oh, my God. Are you and serious? I thought, what a life. I'd love to do that. Well, I just feel, I feel, Adam, I feel with you, you kind of, you, you like that whole life of just going one to the other so you either want to be you know you want to get all your money in crypto and then casino and then just blur it all and yeah i I just don't even when i'd made a a couple of pounds on bitcoin everyone said oh when are you going to get out and i was like well when i have zero pounds you look like when a pub you think well i I will need to be asked to leave i'm I'm not going to leave of my own accord i will will leave when either they run out of booze time or just have no patience for me so i put not only did i put every pound i had into it yeah i I maxed out my credit card, maxed out my overdraft. I thought, this Shit, is so going to come in. I went fully into it because I thought, how could it not work? These articles are perfect. I'm re- reading Reddits, reading Tumblrs, all that sort of stuff. And then uh, the, I cannot stress enough like what was happening to me and Reese the day that it was plummeting. We're in a cafe. I was like, I'll just check my phone. Oh, there's not to be something and, wrong and with Tom, this. And Tom, just you know, you can, get these, have you, you can get these apps that basically tell you all about what the cryptocurrency is on. So it tells you how much money. And it basically is like, a graph going up and down the entire time. Oh, yeah. what, is, what is a crypto? Account? Wait, we're getting to so explain it, your with, then we're trying to explain this as well. Uh, I, 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 the, the worrying thing is, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I've absolutely no idea what it is. I was going to ask that because every single person, whenever they go, they go, hey, what are you doing? Go, well, I'm putting all my money in crypto. And you go, like, oh my God. And you go, what is it? And they go, well, it's an online currency. <laughs> no um, one knows anything I else. I think it's something like bees. <laughs> something to do with bees. I have no idea. It's like coins that you can't smell. Bees. I don't, I, I, mate. It, Honeybees. It could be. Oh, for, all I, for all I know, for all for all I know, it's just I've bought a, a man's sock somewhere online. Wait, but hold on, Adam. So you were sitting in the restaurant or, or with Reese, and so, what happened? So me and me and, and you were watching it just go down. Me and Reese were trying to write uh, jokes. <laughs> we're trying to write a sitcom about. Oh, this is so sad. About yeah, go on, tell us about two millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> and you couldn't quite ends. method into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh god! And then I just checked my phone and I thought it was literally like a sort of double. T- but it wasn't like, oh no, I'm not a billionaire anymore. It's like, oh, I, I, I will be. I'm going to be very thin very soon. 
and uh, but it's fine in it. It's fine in it. Just yeah. Th- I mean, I feel like I feel like it is fine. But are you one of those people just to kind of go? Are you all or nothing? I would. I mean, that would be really exciting if I was. The, the, the saddest thing about all of this is I'm such a boring, dull man, and that people this this is not fit in with who I am. And I just thought, oh, this will be a good personality. This will be a good opener at a party. How are you? Either I'm very rich or I'm very poor. Either way, you're going to keep talking to me because bef- <laughs> I'm very. For the benefit of the listener, you can't see. I look very plain. I look. Oh, you know, no, no, Adam, not they can see you, buddy. They, they oh, can, can you see me? Yeah. Oh, right. I look quite like. Like a Ben, I you're think. No, I think you're like my funny Valentine with your tussled hair. What and is Malteser eyes? What is a funny Valentine? Is this a insult? Uh, the beginning? <laughs> no, no. Um, uh, the beginning of the prelude to my funny Valentine, the song. The song. All right. Yes, the lyric describes you. Can oh, well, how does the lyric go, Tom? It goes. Um, <clears throat> it goes. Behold the way our fine feathered friend his virtue doth parade. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's not. No, I can't. Do you know I what, Tom? It's uncanny. That it is. Really I do look like it's a I do look feathered. I do look feathered. But we were talking about this before <clears throat> in terms of insecurities. Are you, because Tom, we were talking about this. When we were saying before about insecurities, we're the yes. type of person when we meet people, we are like a sneeze. We give everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a machine gun volley. I think I've created this personality that is not real or mine. So I think so my, I was so used to being... Um, like not noticed as a teenager or kid yeah. that like to such an extent well, literally just mate, not noticed a PE teacher <laughs> once asked me to leave because I was in, a, in at my school there was a gym like and I was doing weights in a gym and I was like 17 and the, I was just so un, so unpopular that the PE teacher said to me while I was doing some weights he said what are you doing and I said um, I'm I, what and he said what are you doing here and I said I'm what? And he said, you, this is just for children. <laughs> and I said, I am a child. <laughs> and he thought I was just a man from the town who would just come in to work out oh, in the school man. gym. And I was like, I'm in your class. And he said, I've never seen you before in my life. And I was like, you've been my PE teacher for two years. And he said, fine, what's your name then? Is that catching me out? And it's Adam Hess. And then it, when I said it's Adam Hess, he shrugged as if he never heard that noise in my life. He doesn't register 45 minutes before. And so I think I then created this horribly annoying man character. Mm-hmm. So, like, oh, you can't forget this in a flash. Like I walk past someone with a pug and I go, oh, what's wrong with your cat? And it, you won't like that guy, but you, you don't forget him. Like, oh. It's what Dave Medna calls the act as if phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. Where you sort of, everybody's desperately, desperately shy and you make a decision sort of on the threshold yeah. as you're about to enter a room. That you're going to, I, because I, she said that when she is, so she was real. But I think Barry Humphreys did the same thing. He used to stand behind the curtain and pretend that he was the wireless. You see, oh, he said, wow. "Oh, I'll perform okay. to all of you as long as there's nothing for you to see, and then I can be completely free, completely liberated." I get that. I, I don't know about you about being all like in your face when you meet someone. I remember. I think I noticed when I was at uni, I was intentionally weird because if someone didn't like me then I could justify it by saying, no, they don't like the weird guy. I'm cool. <laughs> so so, you're, so you're, yeah. your, your persona would go, hey, no one can hate yeah. this guy. Yeah. Like yeah. Shaking people's hands with my left hand, all that sort of stuff, putting my hand up backwards, that sort of thing. And then I just, yes, yeah. and it's just these exquisitely embroidered idiosyncrasies that they're, <laughs> yeah. they're taking issue with. Not exactly, you, not me, not the real but, me. But this is, so funny. this is so funny, guys, because I suppose all our listeners go through this as well at the same time. Why do we feel like we have to portray someone we're not the whole time why do we always feel like someone apart from us is always better like i always feel like we have to be ah da, da, all this well, kind of thing the entire day. but in fact our, our normal yeah. self is actually charming and and empathetic yes. and lovely yeah. and friendly yes. well, yes. yeah. if wonder... someone get a mind my god they would <laughs> <Yeah>. run <laughs> <laughs> well, no but that's it jamie because i wonder without getting terribly metaphysical if we don't know quite what the real us is so we steep more into this character that we've devised because all we know of ourselves really is the kind of interminable inner chatter. Yeah, I, I was thinking like the idea of hard, being hard to know what you actually are or think. Like if someone was to ask me, what's your favourite film? There is no universe in which I'll give a real answer. The answer is, I mean, it's a YouTube video of a dog shitting or something like that. That's, <laughs> probably, that's, probably, I'm, that, that's right on my street. But you've got to... You, I, I've revised the answer so much. I, I'm convinced yes. it's The Godfather, even though I probably looked at my phone so many times during The Godfather. Yeah. And that was before phone. That was before mobile phones. I just yes. would love looking at a phone. Adam, that's so interesting because everyone, you know, whenever I'm asked that question, I always say Fight Club. I don't think it is. Yeah, of course not. 
Fight Club's not my favourite. <laughs> yeah, it's the right answer. If I was going to say, I love Parent Trap, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The know. original Hayley Mills, please. Say no, Hayley the Mills. one with Lindsay Lohan. Oh, yeah. God. But yeah, no, it's like we revise. I think cause we know everyone else is faking and being a liar. Everyone's yes. a fucking, everyone's a little liar, aren't they? Oh, I like, I like sunshine. I don't like stabbing cats. But it's like, <laughs> we, we all know what's going on. But like everyone, everyone's, like everyone's going through. I, I just go to a... It's like whenever I'm wearing a suit, I don't know if you get this. I mean, you're, you're both gentlemen, but whenever I'm wearing a suit, I'm, I, in my head, I'm like, how would you do? <laughs> They're falling for it. <laughs> like, if I say a long word like, thorough, I'm like, I, f- I feel really clever. And like, oh, everyone's falling for this little charade. It's I'm nothing like on. a good polysyllable. No, polysyllable. I know what that means. So, I mean, sorry, I've got it's with also, it. Do you know what it is? It's so funny. And also, um, we was, uh, Tom and I were saying this before, that we have these moments in life where we are incredibly happy and we go like, oh, we, we feel great. And as soon as that happiness strikes, we go, well, something has to be wrong. Oh, well, yeah. What is it? Something has to yes. be wrong. Because you, Adam, Where is my worry for today? Where is my worry yes. for today? And yes. Adam, you walked in here and said, I feel great today. So how come you felt great? Sunny. Okay. I'm completely nude. Oh, shit, there's cameras now. So. <laughs> um, it, wait, it's sunny. I've had, a, I found a snake this morning, which was exciting. And oh, you found a snake. I found a snake. No, you did pet. not find a snake. I've got a photo of it, mate. I found, I found. An is that, uh, uh, I, no, it was a slow worm, I think. I Googled it. I, I Googled. It's which, not a snake. Mate, what's a slow worm a then? A worm. Mate, it's called a slow worm. It's, I Googled it. It is, it's a type of, I'll show you a photo of it. Get the photo. It, it is a snake. To all of our listeners, there's no such thing. If There's no such thing as a slow worm. Mate, look, is, I, I, it's okay, look at this. It's meant to be a snake. Okay. Okay. It's a bit- Oh, oh look at that. Look at his face. Ugh. You picked it up? I picked it up, and now I've been weird about my hand all day. I've been holding my hand at least an arm's length away from me. I, um, I'm i like that when I touch yeah, a giant disgusting, snake, isn't it? Too. But it's, <laughs> I, I'm in a good mood because... Why am I in a good mood? Yeah, I've had the right amount of caffeine. I have. Uh, I was in the sunshine. I uh, played. I played with the puppy yesterday. Yeah, and you had a good taxi yeah. ride, right? Coming over. Had there. a delightful taxi drive, drive in which the driver was pretending he wasn't lost, <laughs> which was adorable. <laughs> he was okay. This is how lost he was. I the sun was at some point in the journey on all four sides of the of the car, so we must have done a circle. Or we, I was there for twelve hours, <laughs> and I've never I was on the I've never seen that many back ends of Dixon's. I was, we were going through some bizarre back alleys and then he was on the phone arguing with someone and I could only hear his side of the argument. I think the argument was that they thought he was convinced that someone had stolen a chair from inside his house and someone else was like, no, you only had four at the, begin- the beginning. No, I had five chairs. And then, yeah, so I think he took an intentionally long route just to settle that. I had a taxi driver the other day who I think took a, an intentionally long route because he hadn't finished an anecdote that he was trying oh, so to tell. Oh, so he takes it further. <laughs> yeah. But this, is the, fu- this is the funny thing. Tom, do you, were you the type of person, would you um, would you cut someone off? Would you say, excuse me, I think you're lost? Or would you allow them to continue the whole journey? Do you no, just let I them can't. Continue? And it's for that exact reason is that I'm always in some very deep conversation with them. I mean, I had the same thing with Kamal, my driver, coming here today. And he told me about living in... Marlene for 15 years and how it had changed <laughs> by, beyond all recognition and about his spouse and about his children. And so, you know, by the time I got here, I thought, I didn't think that this is ever going to wrap up in time. I had, uh, I had the one time I had, best experience of a taxi driver I had, I was in Berlin and I went to something called the Berkheim, which is, if you've ever been to Berlin, it's basically a club that you can't get into, supposedly, unless you're a local or know what's playing and all these kind of things. And you have to act uber cool. So we went to the Berkheim, did our thing, and I was young at the time. So, you know, we, I was experimenting. I was partying and we ended up, my friend and I, uh, digesting something bizarre that made us feel slightly weird. Oh, and anyway, I decided to leave because my friend, Charlie Kinsley, right? He was, yes. I don't know why I said his full name again. <laughs> <laughs> out every one of these podcasts. He, I was trying to find, I, I was dancing in one room and I was dancing weird like this. And I, and I blinked. I closed my eyes and opened again, and I was topless. And I went, "What the hell?" Oh, no. <laughs> so I was like, "Okay." This is so I started dancing again. Closed my eyes and opened again, but I was in a different room. And I thought, "Gotta go home." So I went and found <laughs> my friend Charlie Kinnersy, who was in the corner, hunched over, mm-hmm. and I went, "Kinners, Kinners!" And he went. To, I was like, "What the hell?" It was suddenly out of the ring. I went to oh. him, and he was playing with an imaginary bird in his oh, hand. <laughs> I thought, sake. "Oh my god, this is <laughs> this is it." And he went to me. He went to me. What do you think of my bird? And I thought, God, you're creeping me out. Yeah. And I could either left him there to die or yeah. take him home with me. So I took him home. 
We got into a taxi and he was still playing with his bird in the back seat. We got in the back. We were looking very strange. We were driving. The sun was coming up in Berlin. And the taxi driver turned around and said, by the way, you are my first customers ever. I've just become a taxi driver oh. today. And I thought, oh, oh my God. God. As he said that, we're driving down the way, motorway. Charlie Kinsey opened up the door, let the bird out and vomit. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's, yeah. he's starting his expectations low of being a taxi driver. That's yes. quite good. No. Although at least the vomit was outside of the Absolutely. Because that's their biggest fear, isn't it? I, Always. I know the best way to get out of conversation. If someone's talking to you way too long, normally at a party, uh, what I do it happens to be loads. I think, I apparently I think I've got a face which makes people think I give a shit about how their dad came from nothing and now is really successful or some <laughs> shit like that. Well, like, yeah, we should start that business anyway. When people talk to me at parties for too long, I always say to them, "You've got a spider right there," and then they just start screaming and then they either run <laughs> and I go, "No, you're still there," and then they go, "Ah!" and then when that calms down. They just talk you're about just, something you're else. Just you just talk about something. You just can talk about something else. It's but, sure. but this is interesting, guys. Going back to some tax and things that when you were younger, what job did you think you were going to have? Mate, tax genuinely, I'm going to have or want to have. I mean, either, either. Okay, you go first. Tom, what was yours? Oh, well, it was always showbiz for me. I mean, it was. Yes, it was. It was Broadway musicals. That's what, what I I saw myself clutching a Tony at twenty. Did well, Tony that happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Tony Award. <laughs> so when you got to 19, you were like, here we go. It is coming. Because yes. there's that whole thing also that if you, people always say, and I don't know if it's true, but I kind of weirdly believe it. If you put things out in the atmosphere, they come back to you. So if you really believe it, it's going to happen. So every night I now go to bed and go, right, it's going to happen. <laughs> Still hasn't. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's class. the law of attraction idea, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. In, I, in essence. I used yeah. to think that you, I didn't really get the idea that you uh, got a job by applying. I thought you became a thing. When I was like five, I thought you just became whatever it was. And I got really scared that I'd be a boxing referee and someone would accidentally punch me. But I, I was never worried about being a boxer, just a referee. And that really worried me. And I kept talking to my mum and I said, what if I'm a boxing referee? And she goes, you don't have to, you won't, you probably won't. And I genu I wanted to be in the Sound of Music stage version when oh, I was younger. So I was addicted to the Sound of Music. I know every word in the Sound of Maria? Music. I wanted to be Friedrich, thank you very fucking much. <laughs> I wanted to be Maria. Uh, well, you wanted uh, to be Friedrich. Of course I wanted to be Friedrich. Because Friedrich, um, I'm Friedrich, I'm incorrigible. And I was like, I'm, I am yes. incorrigible. It means you want to be treated like a man. That's yeah, which the, I think no. is the most confusing definition of a word ever given. Yeah. I, you want to be treated like a boy. But, yes. but, but, but also the funny thing is, so you had those insecurities as a kid as becoming, a, being a boxing referee. Tom, do you ever, ever have something as a child that you were so afraid was going to happen to you when you grew up? So for instance, mine was that I was going to die and be eaten by dinosaurs in heaven. I was constantly <laughs> worried oh, that, that, that dinosaurs were going to be in heaven. And if I died, I'd be amongst dinosaurs and I was freaking, and I would, I would go to bed. This is my neurotic mind at four, five, six. I would be terrified yeah. about the whole thing. I had go on. No, well, I was going to say, well, I, actually, I think I mentioned this to you before, but um, my big fear actually was was coming out because I was aware oh, yeah. so early. And so the, when Tom I came was, out of the womb, he went, hello. <laughs> I thought that's definitely a one way system. <laughs> but, but no, when I. <laughs> but you know, actually, I. I Did heard, you come out and go, that was gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm never going through one of those again. No, I heard this week, actually, that you've got, because I'm what's called a gold star gay, because mm -hmm. I, I came out through the vagina and then I never revisited a vagina, even even in my kind of um, I, clueless and, years. And never tempted. Never tempted. But then I heard this year that if you were born uh, by cesarean, you could be a platinum gay. Oh, dear. Because you've never been through a vagina at all in any direction. Well, well so don't go and, I mean, that, you want to go pedigree. back and you want to go back into the womb and break yourself out. I'll do that. Hello, with a Tony in hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I spoke, that was, that was the thing that was sort of making me nervous. So I used to say all the time, oh, I'm, I'm married to the theatre. Because I had decided. I remember you telling me. Yeah. 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 That's a legitimate fear. I mean, that's more that legitimate is a real than the dinosaur But then at least thing. you're not telling a porcupine. Yeah. I, I used to have 
of fight, like as, as mad as the dinosaur thing, I used to have this fear of shitting myself in a queue so badly <laughs> that um, I once prayed to God. My parents booked a holiday to Paris, and I prayed to God that I would die before the holiday because <laughs> I, yeah, I, I wanted, I would rather die than because I knew if we were in Paris, we'd go and be in queues, and I thought I'd shit myself, and that would be the end of me, and I'd rather be dead than have that shame. And the reason that was because oh. a primary school teacher said, "Well, we're doing the Christmas play." Uh, soon, so go to the toilet now because you can't go during the play. And I thought, well, you can't go. Then I thought, I'm going to shit myself in a play. So I spent the net. Yeah, so I thought that got a complex for like eight years. My friend um, was taken on holiday by his parents to some like. So he basically his parents were going to take them to Disneyland, and it was a big surprise. And as a surprise, they said to my friend, a guy called Harry, who was actually like, like we're going to take you to somewhere like Bognor Regis, somewhere really standard. My friend really didn't want to go, so he pretended he had appendicitis. Oh god! So he pretended he had appendicitis. Went to the hospital they cancelled the trip and then the parents told him it was Disneyland he was like well, oh, I just pretended that I had a that's amazing yeah yeah oh, so he man. lied about having a pen so he could get out of going to Disneyland but he thought it was Bogner Readers or wherever it was going I I, yeah. oh, I very quickly I used to not, I didn't have a bike when I was a kid but I used to just imagine I had a bike and I would just lie on my back and just pedal my knees. So you just imagine you had parents and <laughs> <Yeah>. a bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so I, would pedal with, I would pedal with my knees. Cause I was just, uh, cause You're not like, in the Flintstones. <laughs> Why are you just going and I, but I didn't have a bike. I didn't have access to a bike. And then one day I got too into it and kneed myself in the nose. I got oh, a massive nosebleed. And I was screaming. My mum came running into the living room and said, what, what's happened? I was too embarrassed. In the delivery to... room? No. How <laughs> old are you? Eight. Oh, I was like eight. And I said... A delivery room? Of course not, no. And I need myself in the nose, blood everywhere. And my mum said, what happened? And I was too embarrassed to say what I'd done. So I said, oh, I've just got a headache. So she thought I was having a brain hemorrhage or something. Oh, no. And rushed me to hospital. And I was too embarrassed to say what I'd actually done. So then they took, the, the doctor obviously found nothing wrong with me. I got then sent to a specialist. She found nothing wrong with me. So my mum, who was weird, took me to a homeopath. Because my mum thought I was dying. She, she just found her son covered in blood, screaming. So the homeopath, just made up something that was wrong with me. She went, oh, he's allergic to sugar and stuff. Oh, I don't know. She just, it, the homeopath said, I don't know how they tested it, that I was allergic to sugar and artificial flavorings and stuff. So I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. And I wasn't allowed fun food for like a year. And I was was not, I was too scared to admit and you I was lying. Knew the whole I knew the whole time. time. It just the great thing about the podcast, you just feel so relaxed. Yes, it's we were, like having we were a massage. deep in conversation we were deep about in sound chat. music. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's, it's like a massage with words. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like lexicon massages. Lexicon, <laughs> a lexicon massage. Yes, Does that I can't. I can't ending? ever. Well, yes. I mean, I can't make love without talking. No, I, I have, are you, I are you have serious? To yes. Okay, well, so let's, well, a little bit of role play. So what happens? So, oh. oh, very tenderly. I mean, I just sort of say, gosh, <laughs> you have such a penetrative gaze. <laughs> Those are the best types, <laughs> penetrative gaze. Oh, aren't they? <laughs> do, you, do you say that? And I do a lot of post-coital talk. Because I sort of wonder at how they were put together. I always think two thirds of beauty lies in fascination. So <laughs> I'm enormously <laughs> attracted to kind of redheads with freckles or. Francis. Um, or, oh, yes. Or anyone that's a wildly different colouring. And I just study them postcoitally and I think. <gasps> How this map of your face is just remarkable. But but this is the thing. Does that do you think then when you're in a relationship you come on a little bit too strong? Is that or, or no? Is that just or, or oh you're... yes? I mean I <laughs> there's I couldn't be further away from being enigmatic. I really do sow the richest tapestry for them to regard, and there's nothing left. <laughs> it's really. so great. I mean, no holes. Isn't it no so? Holes. I mean, it's great. Yeah. It's just fascinating to talk to Tom. Is Fascinating the way his language, his speech, is everything. Um, <laughs> no, but it's a thin veneer, darling. And then after about two weeks, me, you discover that the grey matter isn't up to much. <laughs> it's just an extensive vocabulary. That's it's, all it is. And probably, Adam, Adam, are you in a relationship at the moment or no? With a, a romantic one? <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I know a lot of people, but it depends how. No, uh, let's just go with no for that. Well, have you had a date recently? I, uh, y y yes. Yes. Uh, we went to Bounce. You know, Bounce is a oh, table tennis. okay, the table tennis place. disastrous place. Oh. I thought, because this, this girl said to me, where are you going to take me? And I was like, oh, pub? Because I can't go somewhere loud because all I've got is chat. 
And <laughs> so I just thought, pub, nice and quiet, weather spoons, I don't play any music there. What, because one of us too loud? Just look at each other and you'll I, go, well, that's Yeah, she'll just... see what I look like and it'll be horrible. Oh, but I, no. Quiet. no! You're but... so self-deprecating <laughs> about your look. You're no. definitely no. Well, fine. But um, no, I th- she said, she said, where, where are you going to take me? And I just thought, oh my God, I need, so I Googled like, oh no, I asked Reese, my housemate, where should I take her? Probably the perfect person said, to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, said, yeah. He said, having met Reese, he'd probably be the perfect well, he person suggested, for date options. <laughs> he suggested a bar called Bounce, which is a table tennisery. Yeah. And uh, so it was like, you play table tennis. For, so that's a cool thing, apparently. But I didn't realise, A, uh, it, you could get no conversation going because... Well, for, first of all, because obviously you're never going to be t- as good as each other. So the ball was always going off. Yeah. So the whole yeah. evening was one of us fetching a fucking ball. <laughs> <laughs> and and then when I did chat, we, I had some great chat. I had a couple of jokes about table tennis, which I thought of on the way there. And it was just, it was awful. And then it turned into one of those, I mean, it was I right. I really but, admire that, that you, <laughs> that you put in some preparatory effort. Oh, it, but it's quite cynical. It's just, I think if I run, no. I, I used to run out, I used to, if, I, if I knew I was going to have a phone call, call with someone, I always had a list of bullet points on the phone. <laughs> I had that, I, yeah, yeah, I had that, that too. Oh, God, it, <laughs> it was just highly insecure with your life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was all, no, that day, it was, it was, it was all right. We ended up going to uh, James Italian. Which is two for two things. That is the wankest date. <laughs> Mate, it's awful. It was her choice. It was her choice to go to Jamie's Italian. And uh, Jamie's Italian. Yeah, it, I mean, I, I didn't have much money to throw around. You heard about the Bitcoin fiasco, but um, uh, yeah, I've been on a couple recently. I'm not on Tinder or anything like that okay. because my chat is abysmal on it. Like, I had to delete it. I had it for 36 hours or so, and a girl said to me, "What are you up to?" And at the time, I was having a piss in a jazz bar, and I was like, <laughs> "I can't tell anyone what I'm doing in my life." I, I like, yeah. So yeah, I just got rid of that. And Tom, um, what about you? Have you are you dating? Have you been on a date? Come on, I've things. been on a date with a copper. No. <laughs> yes. And he's, he's very, very tall. Okay. And I felt compelled to confess, to confess my crime history to him. Oh my. So I told him that on a six monthly basis from about the age of 15 onwards, I used to Threaten the queen. slip a dark <laughs> chocolate bounty up my sleeve. Oh my it God. It was very much a winter crime, I have to say, because you need a long sleeve to be able to do it, yeah, really. Yeah. You sort of get it and you just slip it up with your index finger and then you just casually walk out of the it news It sounds agents. so sexual. Th- right. This <laughs> sounds like, a, this sounds like then, you're getting off on like Because that's well, not a crime you need to but, commit. No, it's not. It was very... But I did think that the chocolate tasted more delicious for oh, it, yeah, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, definitely. But our subsequent wop zapping has been very funny because he, he's been trotting out all this delicious persiflage about how I might be leading a bounty crime ring that's global <laughs> and that the office keeps smelling of coconut and it might be an undercover job. And I just... This it really great. tickles me. You I love him. It really you tickles like me. You. I do. I think and, he's great. And did you... Have you kissed him? Mm. You have? Yes, I have. Oh, I had to virtually stand on the other <laughs> pages to do it. He's infinitely taller than me. He towers infinitely. above me. But, but it you, means that when when I get to his face level, like if we sit down over supper or something, it's a glorious surprise because I think, oh, I've been talking to your tummy for the last <laughs> half hour. <laughs> but do you but do you kiss on the first date or do you hold back or? or well, in this, well? I don't have any hard and fast rules, if you pardon the pun. But um, <laughs> we we did kiss on our first date. And very nice it was too. But I always think it has to be like a piece of music, a, a perfect kiss. It's got to kind of crescendo and swell and it's it's got to be really well timed because it tells swell. you everything. Swell. <laughs> yeah, swell. Yeah, how long are you doing? <laughs> I, well, I, hopefully a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I find... Kissing Adam, the, do you always swell when you kiss? No, I, 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 <laughs> you're just lucky that you're kissing. You're literally like, fuck, I got this. I better not swell this time. I think, I think not kissing... <laughs> I think not kissing on a first date is I I I could uh, not to have the confidence to kiss him. I would need to be tipsy, but I don't think you should drink on a date because you should be sober. It's an interview. Uh, you should be sober. <laughs> You're interviewing them. What about so tell other? me your credentials. It's, a, it's <laughs> like and also my opinion is like I went out with a girl once and we were drunk for the first six months of it. We were just meeting up. We were going on dates where you drink and then I fell in love with her and then I realised wait a sec no I just love booze. Like it's like number of times do you think you love Tiger Tiger and you don't you love WKD that's what's happening so me and this girl went up without booze once this it was a first date and we went to the science museum 
And um, I, I thought it'd be really nice. I like science. She likes science, I guess. But the thing is, <laughs> the, the most selfish thing. You like science. Well, she, she was. She was. Yeah. In, I think she was into science or something. And um, but the thing is, I can. I'm really bad at reading. I'm just really dyslexic. So we, you know, you got to read the plaque or whatever next or whatever yes, the engine yes. is or whatever. She was reading the thing quickly, but I hadn't barely got past the first sentence. So she'd then walk off. Then I was like, oh my God, I've got a follower now and I don't know what this fucking engine is. <laughs> and then I was walking around this, this fucking room of, this room of engines and shit like that. And I was furious, but we ended up not kissing <laughs> because it was in the middle of the day and it, it was a lot more romantic, a sober, a sober daytime day. Do you know I'm such a huge cheerleader for that? Because yeah. I think it, the only way is up. Because yeah. then when you do have a lovely supper and a candlelit environment, then you've yeah. got a dark number and everybody yeah. Guys, but twinkly. when is the moment, this is the moment which is the hardest thing, when you, you, you've you been on your date, whoever it is, and you're sitting there, yes. and you know you should kiss, there's that moment where you go, and in your head you're going, fuck, I should kiss. And, you oh. go, and you're going, and then you, you start to lean forward, and oh. then they always do something, but they recoil or they move, and you go, oh, fuck, I'm sort of halfway towards you now, so I have to look like I'm reaching for something. No. And then it all becomes, I, it's, never, it's never a musical, it's never a good note it's always that yeah but moment. you have to have the courage of your convictions ingrid bergman said a kiss is a clever trick designed by nature to intervene when words become superfluous and i couldn't agree more there is that sort of wonderful moment of tacit consent where you just look slightly longer than is natural and then in you go but you have to have the courage of your convictions I, I, i'm convinced every time a girl has kissed me it has been to i was so being so boring with what my words were my words were literally superfluous and she was like just kiss me this, this will end whatever <laughs> shit you're chatting well that leads us on nicely right so we got questions for you guys now every single week we like to read questions from social so we have one I from dina via instagram who says what is the worst life advice you've ever received tom what's the worst life advice you've ever received oh christmas well i always store that in the darkest caverns of my mind never to be opened again have you ever had some advice really like that is just not a good one like for instance i had advice once where someone told me which i still follow now but it's not good advice mm. ask for forgiveness rather than permission so go and do it and say sorry later oh, horrible. Yeah. Oh, horrible. That's horrible that's the opposite of uh horrible prevention advice. is work prevention is better than cure that's the opposite <laughs> advice <laughs> that is the opposite advice yes it's perpetually sort of stitching up and patching up isn't it but weirdly enough it does work because if you then for instance at school i you know i would never ask to do something i would do it and they'd say well why have you done that i say well sorry i just didn't realize if they they say no then you can't do it but if they if they so if they don't have an answer to what you're going to do then you can just go and do it and say sorry later so yes. that's the idea behind it but i guess yes. it's the ramifications of what you've done you don't get in trouble for asking permission but you could get a life sentence <laughs> during <laughs> your act of doing it oh, that's i guess that's interesting advice i worst advice i was given was go to university that that cost me a lot of money and time, which I mean I'm here now, so clearly it did not benefit me. Yeah, but you me. found your alter ego who was cool. I, like, yeah, horrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had to do medical trials to get through that, and <laughs> it was not worth it. But yeah, uni, worst thing. Okay, what about this one? What's the coolest city slash place in Europe to go away with a boyfriend or girlfriend in the summertime? That's from Rosie. What do you guys think? Well, oh. it's great. Tom, you'll be good at this. Where do you love to go? And well, I know it sounds like a desperate cliche, but my heart is there. It's Paris. <laughs> it really is. And they have, a, they have a garden bridge over the Seine. And it's it's all the more beautiful in um, in summer. And they've got such huge open spaces too. I mean, the Champs-Élysées is vast. And even the little off streets like Le Marais or that beautiful place where they do your portraits behind Centre Pompidou. Yeah. And going and seeing the blue women with a lover, I say, I mean, there's nothing like Matisse. Nothing like Matisse. So romantic. I, so romantic. I, I, if, if this was a prank and all of that was just made up, then I would have I fallen for that. Like, I don't understand a single word of that was. You're talking to me as if <laughs> you like... You must go. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I could go. I, I've been to Paris. I've been to Paris twice now yes. and um the Eurostar made me feel sick uh, just conceptually and um <laughs> I, and it, that's 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 all up yeah it, I'm sh i believe people when they say it's nice oh but, yes. well yeah. boys speaking of pranks uh we gotta play a, a little game now okay so what we like to do is do prank calls every single episode are you up for calling Theresa may and booking her on the podcast okay adam are you uh are you ready for this i think so you think you are Reese's one was great. A lot to live up to. Yeah, but that's hard. That was that's easy. That was with the OT. You're booking yourself. This is interesting, but this is a good one. I feel like you got it. You ready for this? It's gonna be a flat no. All right. It's not gonna be a flat no. Don't worry. Oh, hello. 
this is fun. Sorry, this is your voice through a different medium. All right. <laughs> you, look, you look flabbergasted. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, here we're ringing. Hold on. Hello, you have reached the Downing Street switchboard. Please hold for an operator. Oh, there's always an operator. Always an operator, all right. Hello, do you see Rita speaking? Hi there, is that Rita? Yes, it's Rita here. Hi, th- hi there, Rita. Um, yeah, I was just speaking to your colleague, Rachel, about um, possibly being able, seeing if we could uh, arrange uh, for the Prime Minister to attend an event we're putting on. Okay. Um, are you the correct do person you- to speak to about that? Yep, it's me. So um, I'm initially the person who uh, deals with invitations and then they get the appropriate consideration from basically number 10 officials. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Basically, it's a um, it's just an event. It's just a sort of a ribbon cutting, a bit of handshaking. And it's we've got this quite snazzy ribbon. I don't know if you want much of the details. Just cutting a ribbon and uh, it results in a big book falling into a fire. And um, and there's a, a brief bit on a podcast called the Pri- um, a, a podcast as well. Um, would that be something the prime minister okay. would be able to do? Do you think it would take maybe just an hour? So I can't actually give you any indication. What I do is I will take the request and um, pass it on to the relevant officials. Okay. What other details um, would you need? If, so that's what I was just about to ask okay, you. Fair. So um, Sorry, Rachel explained that you were there. calling. Very excited. Could you, um, can I just take your name there first? My name is Eli. Could you spell that for me, please? Um, E-L-Y. Yep. And then Smith. So it's like Smith, but Smith. Mm-hmm. F for Smith, uh, F for um, uh, Freddie Mercury. And yep. Myth, as in Smith. Okay. And are you calling from an organisation? Uh, yes. Okay. Which organisation is that? Um, it is the... It was, we're quite a new charity. It's the... Um, a Double Down Dyslexic Association and Private Parts podcast. So, do you, sorry, I've said that a bit sorry, fast. Sorry, breaking up again. Sorry. Hello. Um, Double Down. Yep. Dyslexic Association and Private Parts podcast. And Private, sorry, I thought you called. <laughs> sorry, 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 Private about. Parts podcast. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, it should only take about an hour or so. Um, it's on a very, it's in a very clean area. I'm trying to work out what other stuff you would need to know about the event. Um, um, what date would that event be on? Well, we, we've got two options. We were thinking either Christmas morning, um, okay, or which we, we understand it's probably not um, possible. Um, another one would be around May the fifth next year. Okay, so I can tell you probably from now that that is actually too much in advance for the Prime Minister to consider. Oh. Um, yeah, so we basically try and consider um, anything, I said, I, said, I said roughly within three months. So you might want to ring again later in the year. Okay. Um, so that it can be given to be honest, appropriate we are consideration. So, we're so desperate to have the Prime Minister that we, like, I mean, it was going to be a bit of a surprise, but we've, we've, we were going to have a... I'll, I'll keep it as a surprise, but basically we, we, we're really keen on having her. So we would be willing to just change it to sooner in advance. So if there's any date within the next week or so that she is able to attend, or even we could come to where she is, or is that too? Okay. Um, so I'm not really sure how to note this. So, if you, so should I just put it in as a flexible... Date. Flex, a flexible date, so flexible yeah, okay. that don't even consider it flexing. It's moving to absolutely any part of the universe to make it work. So, <laughs> okay. flex, I'm imagining a rule of flexibility, but not not even on a linear. There's not like an axis that it to which it is fixed. All all four dimensions we could change. Okay, um, and sorry, can I just confirm what would the ribbon cutting be for? Oh, the ribbon cutting. It's just a sort of... Because we keep seeing on the telly that people, like, cut ribbons at stuff. So we don't really okay. know. There's not, it's not like a race or anything like that. It's nothing to do with ribbon, really. Um, basically, me and my wife would just stand with this ribbon. Okay. And if the, um, if the Prime Minister just cuts it... We don't really... We, honestly, we don't know what it is for. But we'll stand however distance okay. apart you would like. Um but yeah, so I, I think I don't know. Maybe maybe something more appropriate, like cutting string or 
a big originally no that's fine to... i just wanted to check that it wasn't actually a ribbon cutting like an opening for an event oh was that what it is no I, oh right respect. no we, okay. the original plan was to cut a big book because it's a um or like a commemorative bookmark because we, we're trying to be well dwb is our um chance of down with books but um okay but, but, but we thought maybe maybe a ribbon isn't appropriate maybe we can just cut like a bit of you know those things where you like cut a bit of paper and then it's like six kids holding hands or something like that maybe it could be Oh, whatever the Prime Minister would like. Yeah. We just need to... Um, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Can I just take an address there as well, please? Yep. It is um, 15. Yep. Elwood Place. Elwood Close. E-L... W... Sorry was, that, sorry, was that Elwood Close? Place, as in like a fish. Oh, okay. Sorry. So that's right. Um, and the postcode? Uh, BN5... Yep. Three, N, two, one. It's in Brighton. Sorry, hello? hello? BN5, yeah, I yeah. didn't get the rest of that. BN5. Three N. Sorry. Three N. As in naughty. Yeah. T, one. Sorry, BN, so BN5, three N. Three M as in like Morty, like Rick and Morty. Yeah. T as in T, uh, one. Okay. And yeah. Okay. I didn't hear the T. You, you're breaking oh, up sorry, in the middle so, there. Sorry, sorry about I'm just that. In, in my dungeon, in okay. my sort of basement at the moment. Sorry. Um, no problem. If I could take an, a phone contact there as well, please. Yeah. It's um, 07. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 355. Mm hmm. I'll just repeat that. 074 355 yeah. 74. 74 at the end, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, and do you have an email at all? No, uh, we, we haven't set one up. Um, I could do that now for you if you'd like. No, no, that's fine. Okay. So what oh, yeah. I'm going to say is, although I've taken all the details, if you do have access to the internet and you can get to the number 10 um, so the number website... 10, the number 10, sorry? The number 10 website... We have an email facility, which isn't your normal email facility, but okay. it's an email facility that is a contact us form, and um, it has a thousand characters as a limit, but you can email in that way, and it will come straight to this office. Okay. Okay. So Number you can 10. do that as well, although I've taken all the details, it's just... Brilliant. Okay. Number 10 website. I'm not too sure what that means, so it's, to be honest. It's entirely, but... it's entirely up to you whether you want to send something in that way. Great. Brilliant. Um... Okay, but, as yeah. I said, no, um, I mean, we are dyslexic, so that I'll, maybe just a picture. Um, I'll be able to draw a picture or something like that. But, only, but thank you so much for your help. Okay. Brilliant. Thank, thank you, you so much, Reed. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh, God. I feel that's as long as we've, anyone's ever oh, gone. My, sorry. <laughs> that was great. That can ch snip, snip down. Like, oh, my God. That was, that was petrifying. I, <laughs> I was scared <laughs> for you. I was scared Me for you. Me too. I my became, heart was pounding. I was having palpitations. I became Eli Smith. Who the fuck's Eli Smith? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was hot F as in Smith. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I hate it. I hate every minute of that. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, guys, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Oh, honestly, it's a great heart. pleasure. Adam, Tom, guys, you're honestly so funny. Um, that prank call was, I mean, I was freaking out the whole way through. <laughs> yes, freaking me out too. the whole way through. For some, why? Why? Because they're authority, because they're like the government. We freak yes, out. That's a, yes, yes, the yes. king of England's going to, like, <laughs> footman or something like that. It's going to come through <laughs> that the That was so scary. But yeah, thank you for this this incredibly cruel opportunity. And also, and also <laughs> Adam, you're on tour at the moment, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it's finished. But we can talk about something else. Just. Just, uh, yeah, I guess I'm on tour. I'm a comedian, so if you want to see me, then do it. And and you, we can follow you on Instagram as well, can't we? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can. sorry, but yeah, you can do that. Are you still freaking out about it? Yeah, I'm, I, feel very, I feel very worried of ruining someone's day. <laughs> no, you have no. no. Haven't I? I hope not. All right. I think she wanted to week it out. I think she loved it. All oh, right, fingers crossed. And always, guys, what we do at the end of the podcast is we ask you to leave our listeners with something inspirational. Yeah. Mm. Tom? Ah, oh, there's a wonderful phrase. The amateur works until they get something right, and the professional works until they can't go wrong. I think that's Ooh. a good, good rule of thumb, isn't it? 
Adam, what's yours? Uh, a cat. Um, a cat would eat dog food, but dog won't eat cat food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that's my week's knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>